Hi everyone, my name is Heather and I am the social media and marketing manager here at Red Leg Brewing Company. And today I'm gonna show you how to make fudgy stout brownies. So the ingredients that you're gonna need are one and one fourth cup of all purpose flour, one third cup of unsweetened cocoa powder, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, 10 ounces of chopped semi-sweet chocolate, six tablespoons of butter, one cup of packed brown sugar, two eggs plus two egg yolks, and one cup of stout beer. All right, so today I will be using Double Gumption Imperial Oatmeal Stout, which we currently have on tap. You can grab it either in a crowler or a growler from the tap room, or you're more than welcome to use whatever your favorite stout is. Now I have done a few things to go ahead and prep before we get started. I've prepared my station, I've washed my hands, I've preheated my oven to 350, and I've already measured out some of my ingredients just to help the process go really smoothly. Let's get started. So what we're gonna do first is we're going to combine, we have one and one fourth cup of all purpose flour. So we're just gonna put these in here. So there's my flour already added. And then we have a third a cup of unsweetened cocoa powder. And lastly, we have one fourth teaspoon of salt. Let me make sure I don't spill that. All right, so after we do that, all we're gonna do is take our whisk, just mix it all in together. You don't need to do anything crazy. Just have it look like that, nice put together. And then you can set this on a side. So now we're gonna take a quarter cup of uh, semi-sweet chip, chocolate chips. Now the recipe calls for 10 ounces of chopped semi-sweet chocolate. Now at the store, I went ahead and grabbed these mini chips just to alleviate a part of the process. So if you have a bar of semi-sweet baking chocolate, then you're absolutely welcome to use that. This just helps make the process a little bit easier. Now we will be using this entire bag. This is a 10 ounce bag and that is what the recipe calls for. We have divided it into two measurements. So we've got the quarter cup here and then the remaining chocolate here. I put this one aside, the quarter cup. And here we have six tablespoons of butter and we are going to just put them um, over here on the stove in a saucepan on low to medium heat um, just till that melts down. All right, so then I'm just going to take my rubber spatula here and just give that a stir so I don't accidentally burn any of that chocolate. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna let that sit. It's gonna, again, just melt down, have a smooth consistency, and then we're gonna take it off heat and let it cool for five minutes. In the meantime, we're gonna go ahead and take our large bowl here, and we're going to add our sugar. So what we needed was um, one cup of packed brown sugar. Now, I've already measured out some of my sugar, but I did wanna show y'all, so I'm gonna pour that part in there. Um, in case you're un unfamiliar of what packed sugar is, so I have my brown sugar, and I've already started to measure it out. A little bit of sugar on my spoon here. I'm gonna put that on top, and then I'm gonna just press down with the back of my spoon. Now, by doing this, of course, we're just packing the sugar in, just as the recipe says. And you'll see that it's not quite filled, so we can add a little bit more. Go ahead and add that into the bowl to add the eggs and egg yolks. And I have my eggs here. So we need two eggs and then two additional egg yolks. So I'm gonna add the two eggs first, and then the two yolks. So how I'm gonna do this, is I'm going to crack my egg in my bowl, but I'm going to keep my yolk inside of one side of the shell and then I'm just gonna transfer it back and forth. There are other ways that you can do this. This is just the way I've always done it. And I just try and transfer it as often as I need to to get that um, egg white away from the yolk. And it looks pretty good. So there's one yolk. And then I'm just gonna repeat that process. Okay, so after we have our egg yolks, our eggs, and our brown sugar, we're going to beat that on a medium to high speed for three minutes. A few minutes later. Okay, so we've got that mixed in. I'm gonna go ahead and check on my chocolate really quick. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, now that our chocolate's cooled down, we're gonna set this, or we're gonna put this in our mixture. Okay, so now we are going to, on a low speed, we're going to beat this chocolate into our, our um, mixture here. All right, and now we have a nice thick batter. 
almost. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add half of our flour mixture. So I'm gonna take my whisk out and I'm just going to put half of this bowl in there. That looks about right. I'm gonna set this back down and then we are going to mix this in. And you wanna make sure you mix your flour in on a slow speed, because if you accidentally hike that speed up, you're gonna end up with flour all over your face. Okay, so now that we have half of our mixture in, as you can see, the consistency is really thickened up. Now what we're gonna do, this is the part we've all been waiting for, right? This is what we're here for, the beer. So I have a crawler here of our Double Gumption Imperial Stout. I'm gonna go ahead and open that up. So I need one cup of stout. I'm gonna carefully pour that in here. I'm gonna let that rest for a moment so I can go ahead and let that, the foam settle down. And in the meantime, I'm gonna pour myself a pint because I deserve it, because why not? It's quarantine, we're cooking brownies with beer. So what does it matter? All right, so I'm gonna add just a little bit more stout to my cup here. All right, I can see that is a cup now. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to our mixture. And we're going ahead and mix that in again on a low speed just until it's well uh, well combined. All right, my stout is nice and mixed in there. Now what I'm gonna do before I add the rest of my flour, is I'm gonna take my spatula and I'm actually gonna like clean up the walls on the side of the bowl just so I can make sure I'm incorporating all of that batter that maybe didn't get mixed in that, that first couple of times. What we have now is a pretty, um, runny mixture now. So as you can see, it kind of can slosh around there. So we're gonna add the last remaining part of our flour mixture here. And again, you wanna go ahead and mix that in on a slow speed, because you don't wanna accidentally um, lose any of your flour by having on the speed on too high, and then it'll dust it up out of there. So we're gonna mix this in really quick, and I'll be right back. All right, so our batter is all mixed in. Um, all of our ingredients are together. We have a traditional looking uh, brownie batter here. Um, it's not too thick, not too runny. Now, here's where you have a little bit of freedom. You remember that quarter cup of chocolate that we have left? The recipe calls for you to pour it on top of the brownies after you pull them out of the oven so you get a nice like chocolatey glaze on top. But, not everyone likes that. I personally don't like chocolate on top of my brownie. I like a nice fudgy brownie by itself. So what you could do is you could mix these inside of your batter. Um, just a little bit, you don't need to over mix it by any means, you don't wanna break them down. Um, and this actually works really well if you're using chocolate chips instead of those, um, not shavings, but the chopped up chocolate bar. So if you've got chips, you could definitely throw them in the batter and then after you cook, you've got those little pockets of chocolate chip. So that's what I'm going to do because again, I don't like the melted chocolate on top of my brownie. It kinda reminds me of icing or a cake and it's just a little bit too sweet for me. And, and this could, so I'm just gonna take my spatula here and I'm going to fold the chocolate chips into my batter. So I've got my chocolate chips folded in. So we got a nice batter here. Now what we're gonna do, we're almost at the finish line, I promise. I've got my prepped pan here. The recipe does call for a nine by nine uh, pan. I have an eight by eight and I wasn't even gonna purchase a new pan. So the only thing that that changes is, and I might have a little bit longer of a cooking time because my batter is going to be slightly thicker than if it were in the recommended pan. So I've already oiled my pan up. I'm going to pour my batter in here. Then I'm gonna take my spatula again, and just go ahead and scrape out any additional batter. The spatula really makes a difference in, in getting all of that batter. Of course, we've got somebody who loves to lick the bowl. Um, at this point, the stout has not been cooked out. So I, the, the alcohol from the stout, should I say. Um, so I don't recommend giving this to your children, but if you've got any other adults in the house, who absolutely loves to lick, to lick the bowl, this is their time to shine. Now you're gonna take your spatula and you're just gonna kind of even out your batter so it kind of spreads all around the pan. You don't want any unevenness. So I've done that, I'm gonna set that aside. You can even bang it a couple times on your countertop just to make sure you kind of flatten that out. And then we're gonna put it in the oven. We're gonna, again, our oven is set at 350 and we're going to cook it for 35 minutes. Again, they were using a larger pan, a nine by nine. I am using an eight by eight, but what I am gonna do is I'm gonna still stick to that 35 minutes, and I'm gonna use that as a point to check my brownies, and then we'll go from there, okay? I'll come back with the finished product. 
Reminder, don't forget to set your timer, and don't forget about that beautiful pint of stout you poured. Enjoy. This is a time that you can use to clean up, watch an entire episode of The Office, which is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to drink my beer. And I'll be right back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let these cool, and I'm going to cut them up, and I'll insert some photos here at the end so you can see how they turned out. Just a reminder, I will have the recipe down below so you can give it a try, and I hope you enjoy your brownies as well. Thanks again for hanging out with me. I really enjoyed making this recipe, and if you have any other suggestions, maybe we can do another episode next week. Go ahead and leave those down in the comments. Until then, stay safe, stay sane, and stay thirsty. Cheers. Guys, we need to have a talk. I came over to have a brownie. Um, I'm in the middle of editing my video, and look at this. There are still five of six brownies here. My family didn't eat any of them, and I don't blame them. I, I did uh, see them start to eat one of them, and unfortunately, that got thrown away. Um, so here's a brownie, and I know I am to blame for the thickness because I used a smaller pan, but um, look, listen to this. Like, what is that? It, it's a brick. So, unfortunately, I, I think we have to call this what it is, and it's a fail. And I am terribly, terribly sorry that this is how this turned out. And I really hope that this isn't going to keep you from following any future recipes that we may put together. Um, I just... I don't know what happened. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that you'll, you'll forgive us and I can give another go at this, maybe in the future. But these sucked. These, these weren't good. Um, I'll still link the uh, recipe down below, and maybe you are a baking wizard and can figure out how to make them better. And if so, please, please tell us because I would like to have good brownies. Not, I don't, I don't need to build a brick wall. And that's what I'm gonna do with these. But thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I am very sorry that I have failed you. Have a good night.